What's up, everybody, and welcome to this episode of our athlete interview series presented by USANA. I'm your host, Jason Nacy, and today we're chatting with Mandy Bougeau, an 11 time national champion. She's won three continental championships and the only female boxer in history to win two Pan American game titles. Hi. Mandy, how are you? And how are you? You know, I feel like I've known you for a long time. But I've 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 never met you like this. Yeah, I know it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> How's life? Good, good. Yeah. Busy, but good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Hey, I really appreciate you taking the the time today. Um, it means a lot for the for for Usana, um, and you know, it means a lot having you be one of our ambassadors. I gotta say, I think we'll just jump right into it if you're okay with that. Oh, yeah. Um. But I got to say, I loved following your journey as you as you battled the the IOC, the International Olympic <laughs> Committee. Um, you probably are getting this all the time when you talk to people. Uh, it's 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 probably a huge subject uh, conversation, right? But uh, but yeah, I for me personally, it was inspiring. I loved following along and. Really, you know, I, I reached out a couple of times on social media and I have to say, like, it, it was kind of mind blowing to me personally that yeah. it was even uh, uh, an issue <laughs> that, yeah. that, that it even came up because it just it kind of like to me, it seemed like a, a, a no brainer. Look, yeah. they probably have their reasons for doing what they're doing. And, you know, I, I, I don't want this turning into me talking trash on the, uh, on the situation, but it was, it was bizarre, um, to, that, that, that it was even a thing, but it was really cool to watch you, um, stand up for all mothers, um, and, and for all women and to have the outcome that, that you did. What was, what was that like dealing with that situation? Um, a lot. <laughs> um, honestly, it was, it was definitely uh, probably the most stressful time of my life. Um, you know, the IOC, as most people know, is essentially the largest sporting organization in the world. Um, and, you know, even what they were saying back to us is little Miss Bujo cannot do this on her own <laughs> or cannot take on the IOC. Um, wow. I think what they didn't realize was, you know, who I had in my corner and, you know, uh, the lawyer that I was, working with a good friend of mine, uh, Sylvie, she's, she's fierce. She's feisty. We had a, honestly an entire team of women plus one guy. Um, so it was pretty cool to be able to like sit there and on the other side of the screen during this case to, um, you know, to fight for this and to, to fight for something that was important and, you know, even against all odds to come out um, and win this case, uh, which most people said, like, you're crazy, they're, it's never going to happen, you know, they're, they're way too powerful. Um, so that was obviously pretty cool and something that I'm definitely proud of. Um, but it probably took a few years off my life, not going to lie. <laughs> um, yeah. It was definitely, um, you know, high stress, and you know things that you could have never anticipated um you know there's still a lot of confidentiality around it and there's still a yeah. lot of things that haven't quite come out yet that are we're waiting for um you know even the actual ruling um so there's going to be probably like 10 15 pages of you know why they came to that decision that'll be made public um, when it comes out which i'm looking forward to also seeing um but yeah you, you know as we were going along even my lawyer would say things like I always tell my students that like what you see in the movies does not happen in real life. So don't expect it. Um, but it happened in this case. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, um, anyway, it was my first experience with something like this. Um, lots of ups and downs. And, um, again, just proud that we came out with the decision that we got and that, you know, hopefully it's going to change, um, you know, women's sport and, and for mothers moving forward. Yeah. And, I'd have, I have to imagine, I mean, you're going through this, this legal battle while you're also training for the biggest, you know, one of the biggest events of your life I, that, that also had to, had to take a toll. Yeah. And honestly, I do think that in the end, um, unfortunately I like the, the mental energy, um, 
everything that went into this emotionally um, definitely took a toll. And I think that's why, you know, at the end, I wasn't able to perform the way I wanted to at the Olympics, which was too bad. Um, so really have to try to think about, well, what were the big wins and obviously um, making this big change and trying to, you know, leave the sport in, in a better way place than what I found it is is a pretty cool thing to be able to do but there was definitely times when I feel bad for my coach because <laughs> I was like I don't know how many times I like walked into his office was in tears like I don't want to do this anymore um but you know what having a good support system you know my husband uh, my family just the people that every time I was like okay I'm done I like there's no point in this that they just kept saying no you have to keep going you have to be keep pushing um and just helping me realize that it was bigger than than just me and, and my issue and my, you know, Olympic spot. So, um, you know, even from, you know, having people like you reach out and just say like, Hey, like, this is really cool. Keep going, keep pushing, um, was definitely a motivating factor for me. Yeah. And, and I gotta say, I think it's, it's unfair that, that it affected your performance, but from the bigger picture, I gotta say you, what you accomplish and what happened in my, in my opinion, is is even bigger than a gold medal yeah. because it it's going to have a long term effect and is an inspiration to not just women but but everybody. I mean, you 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 went up against the system and, uh, and because you believed in you know in your rights and and you didn't believe you were being uh, treated fairly, so you took on the system and, and won. And I mean, there's going to be so many people that, that, that look to that and, and it's going to have a huge impact on their life. So it is a bummer and, and, and I feel bad for you, but I also think what you did is, is, is amazing. And it, again, my opinion, bigger than, than any, any medal you could have, could have won. Absolutely. So, yeah. 100%. Um, so I want to, uh, I, I saw this video. This was this was a while ago um, when you you did this this TV spot. I think it was for for Canada, where you were on set with a bunch of wild wolves. Yes. Well, I shouldn't say wild. I, yeah. Live wolves. Yes. <laughs> let me let me rephrase that. The, what was that like shooting that? Scary. Um, honestly, I had no idea, like even the morning of what we were going to do. Um, it was just like, all right, show up. Then there's, I knew there was going to be like animals. How were they involved? Were we going to be anywhere near them? Um, but it was pretty badass. Like what I got to yeah. do, um, definitely a highlight for me. Like, um, you know, initially I had to go over with like the Wrangler and, and I was allowed to go, um, near the mail and I had to kind of like try to get close to him and like let him smell me like a dog would right yeah, um, yep. and then like just kind of try to be in its you know <laughs> close proximity without it um feeling threatened um so that was pretty cool to learn and then the fact that like when we were on the ice like we were sliding around so even though there was like something clear on them so that you couldn't actually see it in the video um, anytime the wolf would move, the person holding it would list, like just slide. <laughs> yeah. I was like there's really nothing holding this wolf from attacking me if it wants to attack me. Um, but nonetheless, like they just, they were great. They were like, okay, we're just gonna, you know, do some shadow boxing, which I thought, oh no, is it going to feel like I'm being aggressive? Like, yeah, feel a little scary for them. I don't know. Um, so that was probably where I was a bit more nervous, but once I started doing that and then they were just like not even really paying attention to me i was like oh they don't care <laughs> they are not threatened by me at all um but yeah it was definitely a very uh very cool experience to be a part of and and it, yeah i i gotta say and 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 really i'm i'm not just saying this to to make you feel good that has got to be one of the coolest sporting spots i've ever yeah. seen like that was amazing you're right it was badass like it was yeah. so cool yeah yeah i mean yeah. the entire yeah like the entire commercial um it was ice in our veins was the title of it like there were like they made the athlete and the athletes legit like jumped into the water and it was freezing cold to film their spots or like there was one with the reindeers were like running like it was 
pretty amazing um, yeah. to be part of for sure. So cool. So cool. Um, so I want to jump a little bit into boxing because mm -hmm. you've obviously had an amazing career and I'm sure there's going to be a, a lot of people who watch this who are aspiring boxers. So what is your favorite boxing drill? Favorite boxing drill? Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I mean, I love I love training. <laughs> training yeah. is um, to me, um, you know, so exciting, obviously why I've continued in the sport for so long. So to narrow it down to like one drill, I do really like um, trying to do like more technical drills with like with a training partner, for example. Yeah. Um, so where it's a bit more choreographed, um, but you actually get to work on the actual technique um, as opposed to what you would do in open sparring. So um I would say that's probably my favorite thing to do um, in training. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there is there a drill that you think um, that that made you a better boxer? I mean, obviously all the drills, but is is there a spe specific drill or a couple drills that you really felt like built a foundation for you and 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 your boxing style? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think shadow boxing is probably um, the most underlooked uh, thing in boxing, which I think helps every boxer build their technique. Um, and for me, I've always just focused on like mastering the basics and the technique behind boxing because it's all body mechanics. Um, the, the more that you can do that, the more you can do it more efficiently, um, the faster you'll be able to do it. And it's just going to happen without you even thinking about it. Um, yeah. So just really working on the basics in your shadow boxing and shadow boxing every day to make sure you're like using that as like a way to warm up before yeah. you do anything else. I think a lot of people skip that step um, and they just want to kind of go hit the heavy bag or do that. Um, you know, what looks like the fun stuff. But really just spending some time um, making sure you're focusing on proper technique, um, I think is what has helped me have a really long career. Yeah. So I love following you on Instagram and you post a lot of drills. So I encourage anybody who's, yeah. who's watching this, um, go follow Mandy on Instagram. She, she does a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. One, one of my favorite ones to watch you do is where you, you put the, uh, tennis ball or yeah. a ball on your head and your your boxing that's gotta yeah. be unbelievable for your for your reflex yeah absolutely a lot of people love watching that um just because it's kind of more of like an old school anyone could just like, like i make that tennis ball yeah. um and i make it look easy um the fun part is usually like if i go to a tournament or something and i do that um, other boxers will come up and like want to see what I'm doing and then I usually like let them try it and it usually hits them <laughs> the first couple yeah. of times um, but really great for like eye hand coordination um, timing and yeah there's there's so many fun benefits and you can do it anywhere so when you're on vacation you can take it with you and it's just yeah. a way to like stay sharp so I love how you brought up that that you make it look easy because <laughs> I've had this conversation with 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 several athletes and that is the beauty of of a professional athlete or an elite athlete in my opinion is when you're doing your sport you're you're so in tune so good at it that you do make it look easy where a guy like me can say oh yeah i could yeah, i could yeah. go out there and do that oh i could I, I could do that and then when you get a chance to try it it's like oh wow you know like this is it's you know, it's, it's scary being in a ring like yeah. that and having everybody um, all eyes on you and, you know, your opponent is out for blood just like you are. I mean, it's it's uh, it's pretty intimidating. Yeah, I think like even during the last Olympics, um, there was quite a few little memes going around where someone's like, we should put an average person in every one of these events so we can actually yes. like see the difference between like what. Yeah you know, these athletes have trained to do for so long and like you said, make it look easy um, versus like someone just kind of stepping in. So hundred <laughs> percent. So talk, um, going back to the Olympics, do you have a favorite Olympic memory? Um, Ooh, that's tough. I mean, obviously for me, um, you know, the 2016 Olympics, 
um, you know, qualifying for that Olympics, like that moment when I fought and qualified for that games was the highlight of my, of my career by far. Um, for me, just knowing that like, you know, all the work you had put in, um, you know, 13 years of training and finally getting to that moment. Like I was like on cloud nine. <laughs> um, yeah. it was just a whole other, um, experience, but in Rio 2016, obviously that was kind of a really cool Olympics. Um, for me, that first experience, the first couple of days you're walking around, you're just like in awe, like at the village, um, you know, walking up and seeing someone like Serena Williams and taking a selfie with her. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone that I've always, you know, really admired and looked up to, um, you know, seeing like Usain Bolt or whatever in the dining hall, like that's pretty cool. And it kind of puts it into perspective of like, Hey, like, Hey, I'm part of this like group of elite athletes and, yeah. and that's pretty neat. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so many things like walking into the opening ceremonies, um, obviously is a highlight, I think for every athlete, cause that's just, the excitement of, you know, 80,000 people um, cheering and you're in your Canada gear and there's Canada flags everywhere and you're just so proud of, of being there. Um, and in that moment, something that you work so hard for, kind of like that's kind of that moment when it begins. Um, so, yeah, there's there's obviously lots of great memories. Uh, yeah. Here. So I love how you brought up all the work. Um, that's, that's one thing that I I – really love to talk about with with elite athletes is the the effort and the work that goes into your craft i mean again you make it look easy and people just see that yeah. one little aspect of it and, and and just assume that you were given this talent right and that that, that you were just naturally an amazing boxer um which usually isn't the case. Like it's, would you say 13, 13 years to, of, of, of training and all that to, to get to that point? I think that's what you said, 13. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about that because I think that's so relatable with people in general. Like whether you're, you're an entrepreneur or whether you're a student at school, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's the effort, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think what maybe a lot of people still don't know about my background is that like, I was not an all around athlete. I was not an athlete at all <laughs> until I found boxing. Um, and that was when I was about 16 years old. So, you know, growing up, I never played sports like really, really young. My parents would put me in things like baton twirling or like, you know, artistic gymnastics, but I was never good at those things. I was never flexible. So like most girls, I walked away from any sport and I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm good at this stuff. Um, even to the point where like in grade 10 in Canada, you can, you know, opt out of taking gym class if you don't want to after, after that point. Um, and I opted out of it because I was not athletic at all. Um, so, you know, when I first walked into a boxing gym, again, it was like trying to find the right thing for you. Um, yeah. to me, I was attracted to it because of the, um, the skill, like really wanting to learn how to throw punches, how to defend myself. That looked exciting for me. Um, and then the training was kind of a little bit more like, okay, like this is hard. Like I remember at first it took me probably like a full year of training before I could actually get through the warm up without like tying my shoe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Like that's like legit. I just, it was so hard for me, but it kept me coming back because it's like, there was something about it that I'm like, I really want to be good at this. I really want to learn this. I want to master this skill of boxing. Um, and again, yeah, that's what kept me in. And, you know, having a really good team obviously helps having, having those little things. Um, so obviously competition kind of keeps you engaged and motivated um, as you, you know, start developing um, as an athlete. But like you said, in anything in life, um, in business, you, you have to start somewhere. Um, you're not going to just go into it. Most people aren't just going to go into it and be like, Hey, on top of the world, you know, you're, yeah. you're, <laughs> you're the number one person in your market, whatever, right. You have to work to get there. And, um, you know, it takes, it takes dedication. It takes good team. It takes, um, you know, a lot of elements to get to that point. So if you can put it all together, um, obviously that's where you get the success. Yeah. So was there ever a time that you felt like quitting? Oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
all the time, all the time. Um, yeah, there were so many moments. And then just like in any other, you know, sport or any other industry, there's a lot of politics involved, um, yeah. you know, and in, in, especially in the sporting world. Um, you know, in 2012, I could have gave up. Um, I tried to qualify for the Olympics, didn't qualify. There was, you know, an extra uh, wild card spot. My own governing body said that they put my name in. Um, and then we find out it was a lie. My name is never put in. So like people who are supposed to be trying to help you get to that point are now like behind closed doors yeah. working against you. So like, yeah, I could have, I could have quit, could have walked away and said, all right, well, clearly these people don't want me here. Um, they don't think that I have what it takes to get there. Um, but no, you know, I didn't let those things stop me. Instead, that was like a motivating factor of like, I know I can do this. I just always had this feeling of like, I know I can be the best in this sport. Um, and just, not letting anything deter me. Obviously there was lots of obstacles, but not letting those things become barriers, I think was the biggest thing. That's great advice. That's awesome. Um, so you have a beautiful daughter. She's so cute. And, it, and it's <laughs> fun, you know, seeing your interactions with her as you were training for the Olympics. But did after, after she was born, did that change you as an athlete? Yes, um, absolutely. <laughs> um, it changes a lot of things. Um, you know, I think it makes it obviously it makes it a little more challenging. You have to have like things in place, like a, again, a proper team, proper support system to be able to do, you know, be an elite athlete and and juggle being a mother. Um, but it also makes things um, more rewarding. It makes things more exciting. Um, you know, seeing things through her eyes, like watching how she, you know, just looks at the world or like interacts with things. Like to me, that was always really inspiring. Um, wanting her to like see me as a role model, see me as someone that, Hey, look what my mom can do. If my mom can do that, I can do that. Um, that's obviously, you know, a huge, a huge motivator. Um, and then also like being in the gym, that time that you're spending away from, from your child, you know, that's important time. That's like crucial. So it makes you, I think, push a little bit more. Um, not that I ever like slacked when I'm in the gym, yeah. but there's just a different focus that you're like, oh, okay, yeah. if I know I'm going to be away for, you know, an hour and a half or a couple hours here, a couple hours there, um, every day, I need to make sure that when I'm in the gym, I'm doing everything I need to do to make sure I reach that goal because that's a very important time that you're spending away from them. That's a great point. Um, one that I really wouldn't have thought about in, in, in that situation. I mean, it probably really, um, forces you to focus more, like you said, put the effort in. So maybe what would take you three hours before takes you an hour and a half. Cause you just go in and, 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 and push that much harder. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. And you just planning things out, right? Like you now have, um, a little human <laughs> that needs yeah. you. Right. And like when, especially when they're a baby, like that was, that was obviously very challenging. Cause like I was breastfeeding. I couldn't be away yeah. for more than two to three hours. Right. Like you had to plan everything just perfectly to make that, um, make that work. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a whole different challenge, but something that, uh, you know, I wouldn't change anything of it. And I think it'll be really cool, um, you know, even just to be able to show her some of the videos or some of like the little moments that, um, you know, she, she's experienced with me that she probably doesn't yeah. realize at this point. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, with, with the experience that you've gone through, um, earlier in the year with, with the IOC, um, and, and also like Serena Williams and some of these other female athletes, having babies and then continuing sport, do you think the landscape's going to change? I do. I do. I think, um, obviously, you know, my story is just a small, you know, sliver in, in like what really needs to happen and what needs to continue to move forward. But I think we're seeing it a lot more. Um, you know, we're seeing, um, you know, even in soccer where the, 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 these women on the U.S. soccer team, or they bring their kids with them every day when they're going to to practice or to play games, and you know we're seeing it in so many different sports. You know, a lot of the track um, athletes are, are mothers who have you know come back after you know having children. So I think there's definitely more 
and more women that are doing this. I think this is going to be more of the norm. We're staying in our career a little bit longer. Um, yeah. So I think that's where, yeah, the the system needs to change where we start taking that into consideration, especially when it comes to like ranking and, you know, that type of thing, right? It's like when I, when I left before my pregnancy, I was ranked number eight in the world, number two in the Americas. Then I come back and I'm not even, it's as though I never boxed before. And it's just yeah. like, well, what? That doesn't even yeah. make sense. Like, um, so yeah, I think there really needs to be, that's something that needs to be um, taken into consideration when they're creating this criteria or um, whatever it might be leading into major events. Yeah. And, and I have to say, I have four kids, so I've seen the impact and the toll it takes on a, on a woman's body going through that recover, you know, going through the nine month process mm -hmm. as, as well as, you know, the recovery after, yeah. I mean, it's amazing yeah. that, uh, that, that you guys are able to come back mm -hmm. and be so competitive and even more competitive, uh, than, than you were before. Amazing. My hat, hats off yeah. <laughs> to, to every, uh, athlete who's, who's, had a child and, and come back to, uh, to participate in sport. It's yeah. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, let's shift gears just a little bit. I know I don't have too much more time with you. Um, but since this is, uh, a, a, a USANA thing, I, I, I would have to ask you what your favorite USANA product is. Um, so I'm probably going to say the whole bio bars. Um, okay. And only because those are just, for me, they're like almost like an everyday <laughs> yeah. item. Um, something that, you know, I just throw in my gym bag. Um, I travel with them when I'm going to competitions. They're just like such an easy snack and I know I'm, you know, getting what I need out of those snacks. Um, and on top of that, like, obviously I do the, the athlete sport pack. So I do, yep. um, all the vitamins vitamins on a regular um they're super convenient as well the way they're packaged um and then um the newer product that i really like is is like the copa prime yeah so before i used to do the ginkgo which i just to me just like helps me feel sharp so like in the yeah. ring it's like it's a split second you know reaction time and for like when i'm taking those products i do feel like that gives me an advantage on that side of things yeah that's yeah. Um, so why USANA? I mean, I'm sure you had a lot of uh, opportunities to partner with with different companies that that does the same thing that USANA does. So why did you choose to partner with USANA? Um, so I mean, I was taking the USANA products um, far before I actually partnered with them, which was, you know, really early on in my career, there was a strength and conditioning coach that I work with that, that had USANA. And he basically was like, you know, I was young. I was just kind of like getting into sport. And he was like, you need to take vitamins. These are the best vitamins on the market. Um, give them a try. And then, you know, I was honestly hooked from that, from that point. Um, and then even like, you know, as I, I started to like learn more about different companies, like you said, um, my nutritionist, um, you know, she would often, when she would pull things up and like, what am I doing for my diet? How do yeah. I supplement that? Um, and she would always like pull up the ingredient list and things. And, you know, again, she would always say like, these are the highest quality um, vitamins that you can get. So that was obviously something that was really important to me. I don't really like taking like supplements um, too yeah. much. So for me, like just having like super simple like vitamins um, that that I can take that I know what's actually in my products um, and that are like tested. Um, again, we go through a lot of, you know, doping control testing, um, having products that you know, you know, you can trust, um, you know, there's that, that million dollar guarantee that, um, on, on, especially like with the sport pack, knowing that what's in your product is actually what's in your, in your product. Um, yeah. that's, that's a huge, um, huge relief, you know, for me and for a lot of athletes, because, you know, when we go through these seminars and they're like telling us about, you know, this anti-doping stuff, it is like scary when they're basically telling us like, do not take anything. You are not allowed to take anything. Yeah, yeah. So, it's hard to make that decision. So to have a product, 
or products that you really trust um, is definitely important. Awesome. Awesome. Um, last question. So I, I, I usually like to end with this because I think anybody watching it, it, it's, it, I've got a lot of useful tips, okay. right? So what's one thing that you do every day, oh. um, whether it's to start your day end your day in between, whatever, um, that you feel like helps you as a person, as an athlete could be, could be anything. Just one minor thing that you do every day that would be easy for somebody else to implement in their life to help them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I honestly, I, I set like small goals for myself <laughs> all the time. I'm a planner. I like to write things down. So like if there's things that I want to accomplish that day, um, instead of just like thinking about them over and over and over again, I just like write it down. Um, and then it just feels so good that once you do it, you can like literally just check it off. <laughs> yeah. um, and something that simple for me um, just helps me feel like, you know, I'm always just working towards something. And then, hey, you get that gratification of, I've just completed that task, you know, on to the next thing. So I think like whatever your, your goals are, whatever it is that you need to get done that day, making a list, checking it off that list. I think for me, um, that's one of the things that I like to do. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Mandy, you're amazing. You're a great inspiration. So glad you're a part of the USANA athlete program. And, uh, it, like I, like I said at the beginning, it's been a privilege for me to watch you an inspiration. Um, I, I got two daughters, so it's, it's, it's fun, um, sharing your journey with them so they can see, you know, that there are no limits. And, uh, and I love that message that, that you're sending out to, to women in particular, but I mean, that's a message for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, uh, again, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for watching today's interview. Just as a reminder, we do this bi-weekly right now. If you guys love the content, make sure to post a comment. Let us know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you get notified every time we're posting these videos. Thanks for watching.